Good. So um, this is uh, something completely different. Um, somehow we have to figure out what our headline messages are that we want to convey to our head teachers, to the DFE, and to the government, and indeed to ourselves. So uh, this, this, is li this little slot, this little 20 minutes, is just about some, some work we've been doing on that and to invite your help in making it better. So I just want to start by giving a kind of three-slide story. Good. So um, this is uh, something completely different. Um, somehow we have to figure out what our headline messages are that we want to convey to our head teachers, to the DFE, and to the government, and indeed to ourselves. So uh, this, this, is li this little slot, this little 20 minutes, is just about some, some work we've been doing on that and to invite your help in making it better. So I just want to start by giving a kind of three-slide story that I, was, I had the pleasure of presenting to David Bell uh, a few days ago. He's the permanent secretary at the Department of Education. So here's the, here's the little story I told in three slides. So uh, what is education for? We're trying to prepare young people for a world that doesn't exist using technologies that haven't been invented to solve challenges which, we don't yet aware, which we're not yet aware of. So how are we going to do that? So typically at school we do that in, in, uh, in two ways. We teach them disciplines and skills. We don't just teach them skills. So what, I, what do I mean by the difference between these two? For disciplines, we're focusing on long-lasting, slowly dating stuff, principal ideas, methods, techniques, that kind of stuff. Skills tend to be focused around particular pieces of technology. It's really useful to learn skills, but they date more quickly. So what's happened in computer science is uh, that we've shifted over time. Uh, the the uh, Steve Ferber era of the BBC Micro, uh, we were very much about, well, that was about technology too, but we had to learn quite a lot of discipline stuff to program the beast. Um, so now this is, this is the story that I think many of you will recognize. Now, I don't want to, um, uh, to denigrate the right-hand column because it's really important and valuable and creative. But somehow, over time, we've swung so that we're very technology-focused in ICT, and the discipline bit has shrunk to something very small. Not for the people in this room, but if you look in the country at large, that's the story. Right? So our business is to say, well, what is the piece in this room? So if we're to go to our head teachers and to our DFE and to the government and say we should expand that bit, we have to say what it is. Right? What is this computing thing, this computer science thing that we would like to see taught at school more, or learnt at school more? And uh, we need to tell everybody from ourselves upwards. So it puts a kind of obligation on us to be a bit specific. And uh, this guy, a DFE official I met um, a few weeks ago, uh, said to me in some surprise, he said, oh, is there a core body of knowledge, a, a slowly moving stuff that wouldn't date from year to year? Is there something that we at the DFE, DFE could say, uh, we'd like you to teach this at school that wouldn't be out of date two years later? And it was great to be able to say, actually, yes, there is. But it was a surprise to him because his mind was so technology focused, he thought, oh, it, it must all change every year. So that led to this little working group that we've been working for uh, the last year. And actually, it's built on, um, on work by CAS members earlier. So about 10 of us have been working. Some school teachers, um, some people from industrial research labs, um, some people from exam boards, some university researchers. Um, and building this, this thing that is, uh, uh, we called, uh, in the end, it started off called, called the Body of Knowledge Working Group, and it's now called uh, Computing a Curriculum for Schools. So it's landed. It landed today, actually. Well, uh, yesterday now. Um, it's, on the, uh, it's on the CAS website. So what is it? It's, um, uh, it's a draft story for what this core um, set of knowledge that you might hope uh, could be taught at schools is. Um, so when I say the final version has landed, this is just the... This is just the we have to get to a point at which we're prepared to uh, put it on the table and say, here it is, what do you think? So we're at that stage now. Of course, it's not really final. Anything like this is going to continue to evolve. You've already had a chance to see two copies, if you're, two versions, if you're on the CAS mailing list. Um, and, uh, and I think there'll be, continue to be feedback. Let me just give you a quick idea of, uh, of what's in it. The idea was to start from the National Curriculum Programs of Study structure. And that has these headings, importance of the subject, key concepts in the subject, what are the key processes, that is, what should students be able to do if, they're, if they learn a lot in this subject, and range in content, meaning what should they uh, be expected to know um, at the end. And then there's, uh, we added a section on level descriptors as well. So the whole thing in the, in the national curriculum programs of study typically is, would fit on oh, three or four pages of A4. R1 takes 22. Now, why is that? Well, it's because computing is less well-known. We, we want this to be accessible to teachers broadly. So if you compress it too much, you don't convey enough. So it's much longer, not because it's technically complicated, but because we're trying to articulate more explicitly what's in it. 
So just let me give you a quick, um, uh, quick picture. Oh, where are we? Um, here. So here's the, uh, uh, here's the document. So that there's a little introduction here about what's good. So here's the importance of the subject. So this is about two pages, just generally making the case that, you've, uh, that you have been making again and again to your head teachers about why computing is an important subject. Um, key concepts. So here's the key concepts we picked. Languages and machines, data and representation, communication and coordination, abstraction and design, the wider context. So just as headings, they don't mean terribly much. So there's a bit, bit of expansion about what all those things might mean. Um, then key processes. So this is where you probably read articles about computational thinking. So uh, we just identified, like many others, just use that tag computational thinking um, as the key process that we want students to engage in. But often I hear talks that say computational thinking isn't X or Y. And we really wanted to try and say what computational thinking is. So this is our attempt to do that. Here it is. Um, and then, uh, then there's a section on um, range and content. Uh, down here that will look more familiar. In fact, um, it might even look quite dated. Why might it look quite dated? Because um, our aim here was to focus on the fundamentals, the, bit, the bits that don't change every year. So there's nothing in this about Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or any of the stuff that's flavor of the month. This is the bit, that's, that's the how part, right? So our aim was to focus on the what part that doesn't change too often in the hope that you are going to deliver the how part by, by using the flavor of the month as a way to engage and excite your students, right? Does that, does that make sense? So that's, that, that's the hope anyway. The focus in the document, as it stands at the moment, is largely on key stage three and four. We're working at the moment on trying to add some stuff in key stage one and two. It's a question of keeping Mark Dawling under control because left alone, he, the, with the Digital Schoolhouse project, he'd take all of the key stage three and four material and say, we can teach this to primary school kids, and he probably can. So um, there'll be, there'll, there's a bit more work there. But even when you look at the key stage three and four material, you may think, gosh, this is ambitious. Do you think we could really teach this to a key stage three pupil? Um, so actually, we'd like to know whether, whether you think you really could. We have some evidence to believe that it's doable because we consulted with quite a lot of st school teachers in doing this. But in a way, doing that is a stretch goal, and it's not going to happen overnight either. So what is going to happen with this document? So here we are. We've got, this is just a little tiny piece, this thing. Um, what do we want to do with it? Two things. One is pointing upwards and one is pointing downwards. Let me just quickly uh, talk about the pointing upwards bit. So once we've got something like this, we can start to influence national policy. And it comes at a time, a very good time, because there's this national curriculum review, right, which the DfE is running. Uh, Bill Mitchell mentioned it yesterday in Simon Humphreys. And, and uh, so they've had a call for evidence. They got 5,800 submissions. Every submission was written by a group that cared very much about their subject. You know, the Food Safety in Northern Ireland group put one in. So um, if you can, you can imagine the DFE uh, just completely buried in 5,800 submissions. So we have to do a bit of work to try to get our submission, right, the, the, the BCS CAS submission, above the radar. So we made a submission, of course. It's on the, uh, the CAS website. Do have a look at it because it represents um, uh, us speaking on behalf of all of you. Right? So we better be saying what you believe in. So if you're not, better tell us, please. Um, now, so um, what can we do with this? Well, um, as part of the National Curriculum Review, the drift of the National Review is actually quite in tune with the story that I was telling earlier. Right, here's a couple of quotes from the two ministers for education. One said, Michael Gove, a couple of years ago, the whole thrust of the new, he was talking about science, and he said, uh, where we are um, empowering students currently as consumers of science, and I would like to educate scientists. And uh, Nick Gibb, who's his colleague at the DfE, a few days ago, uh, said in a meeting I went to, uh, in a talk he gave there, too much focus on user skills, not enough on fundamentals and conceptual understanding. Now, you, you may agree with them or you may not, but it's at least pushed this, this sentiment is pushing in the same direction as we're trying to do by establishing computing as a discipline, as a proper school subject, uh, not something to be taught by a geography teacher with a spare period. Um, so we're beginning to get visibility at a national level, um, and having a document like this is incredibly helpful um, because we can say, well, actually, there is a, a core subject here, and we've even thought about what it is. Um, so it makes a big difference. So... Uh, but I want to, the, the, I want to make a, the, the point here that this part here is only possible because of all of you, right? If I'm, if I'm writing to um, 
uh, you know, if, I, if I'm going to visit an official at the DFE, the only reason that I feel at all credible there is because I say there are hundreds of school teachers out there in the country who are desperate to teach this stuff and are qualified to do it and can do it, and they will help me, uh, their colleagues to do it better. So uh, it's only happening because of you. Which takes me to this last bit. It's all very well having a bit of paper, but how are we going to turn it into lessons? Well, all of you are kind of doing it already. You're walking the walk, right? You're the leaders here. But there are hundreds of other school teachers around the country who don't feel as confident as you do. Well, you may not feel very confident either, but just imagine how they feel, right? So somehow we have to take this bare idea, which has, is all about what and not at all about how, and help them turn it into something that they can, they can deliver, which you are doing already. So that leads me to, uh, to Stephen, right? Because the idea is you, you're walking the walk, right? But the question is, would you go just a little bit further and help other people do it too? I'm Steve Hunt, Cynthia Selby, who some of you saw last night. Uh, we're coordinating this, uh, this part of the, the project, if that's what you want to call it. Um, hang on, let me see if I can get this moving. That's better. Uh, yes, the curriculum document sets out um, a blueprint for what we think could be taught. But as Simon says, um, you're the guys who are actually doing it. Right, we've got some ideas and people in the group have got some stuff, but we haven't got anything like as much as you have. Cynthia and I are coordinating this process of bringing together materials and developing new ones, because if you look in the curriculum document, it's very likely that there'll be stuff there that isn't currently being taught at, at school level. That's fine. Uh, we appreciate that this is something that's a growing process. Uh, what we really want to do is to inspire, empower, bring stuff to people who aren't doing it already, and also bring stuff to those who are already teaching this, but not teaching across the whole of the curriculum, and give you more power to do your jobs. That sounds a bit too motivational speak, doesn't it? Yes. Um, the aim in the end is to provide example materials that support teachers across the whole curriculum, across the different key stages, and for work with kids of all different levels of ability. It's a big vision and a big project. It's not going to happen in five minutes. It's not going to happen in a few months. This is probably something that's going to take us a couple of years altogether. It's frightening, to be perfectly honest with you. It's frightening to have agreed to, to take it on. I suspect that Cynthia and I won't see it all the way through, but we'll start the process off, and there'll be others who are better able to continue it. Um, not only is it a process of developing example materials, but hopefully, in the long term, we would keep this as a resource bank that keeps going in perpetuity and keeps developing more and better resources. Um, we're starting off uh, doing a number of things. We're, uh, we haven't done this yet, but we're starting off by building a map of the curriculum. Uh, one of the problems with the curriculum document as it stands at the moment is essentially a list. And the difficulty with lists is that people have a tendency to start at the top and work their way down and think that all they're doing is working through this in the order it appears in the list. Well, that's not going to work for teaching purposes. Um, things are going to have to be taught in different orders to different groups. It's going to need to be possible to pull something out and do it separate, uh, separate from other things. It's, it's absolutely essential that people shouldn't think that they have to do the whole of this, because if they do, particularly non-enthusiasts, they'll take one look at it and say, I don't want to do all of that. I haven't got time. I haven't got the lessons in the week or in the, in the term. What we need is a way of giving people resources that they can use to teach parts of this curriculum and slowly introduce more of it. Those who want to do the whole lot, that's great. We haven't got materials for the whole lot yet, but if you can provide them, we'll be very grateful. So we're, uh, we're going to map the curriculum and look at different themes, topic areas, subject strands, um, problem domains, technologies, things that will help support this. And initially, Cynthia and I thought we would have one big poster sort of map, but I suspect we're going to have three or four of them showing different ways of looking at and approaching the curriculum, different approaches to teaching this, different approaches to using, uh, developing and using materials. And the whole point of this map is it gives us a framework within which to fit existing and new materials so that we can say to people, well, if you pick up this box of stuff, you can use it to cover these topics and this strand or this theme, and you can use it at these different levels, yeah, with these different key stage groups. And this might not be appropriate for weak students, but this might be. But this might be. So the idea being that the map gives us a better way of looking at these materials than just the curriculum document does. 
The next step, which is where you guys come in, uh, I, I, I will, we'll consult you on the map, of course, but we don't expect you to come up with it. Our job is to come up with a map and get your feedback on how useful it's going to be to you. But the big job for, for you guys is to help us by, uh, by giving us your existing resources. So we're going to collate existing resources. Uh, we'll probably try to, um, to, to bring them into a more coherent form, but we won't beat them up. We're, we don't see it as our job to rewrite what you've, you've done. We see it as our job to bring them into a form that everybody can use. Um, so what do you already have? When are they useful to you? How do you use them? This is what we want to know from you. Uh, our job then is also to relate them to the curriculum map and then to publish them, get feedback, refine them, give lots of uh, praise and applause to the people who are doing them and try and encourage more people to contribute. Uh, now, this isn't just Cynthia and me. Uh, not only could we not do it, but neither of us are arrogant enough to think that uh, we should do it. Um, we have a working group who are, help, uh, who are recently formed, who are going to come together to coordinate this whole process. It's a group of mostly teachers, a few academics. Um, we'll probably have more people later. They'll p it's not going to be a fixed group, I don't think, over, the, over a long period of time. So those of you in the room who volunteered for this, who thought you were volunteering for something over the next six months, and I'm talking about two years, don't worry, okay? Um, we, don't, uh, we don't think that because you've volunteered, that uh, you're, uh, you're stuck for life, okay? We, uh, we, and we will also be happy to have contributions to the working group from other people. Um, but the purpose of this group is to oversee this development process, uh, development of the curriculum map, collating the resources, further developing the things we've already got. And now I come to the big message. We need you, yeah? Without you, this isn't gonna work. We can't produce all this stuff. There aren't enough of us, we haven't got enough time. We're all doing it in our spare time, or we might get a little bit of facility time given to us, but not much. What we need are your resources, your ideas, your practical help, your support in developing uh, and refining the materials that, of course, you're going to use with your pupils. Um, we are not looking for lots of beautiful stuff, please, right? An idea that's in, uh, that's in a rough and ready state where you've thought of some things but you're not quite sure how you'd do it. Yeah, we'd be interested in that. Also, uh, yes, if you've got beautiful polished materials that you've been using for the last five years, we'd love them. But if it's just something that you've used once in a class and you thought it had the germ of something good in it, we'd also love that. Yeah? If, particularly if you say, look, I've got something here, could you polish it for me? Well, if we can't, we'll try and find somebody who can. Yeah, so we're not looking for beautiful stuff. We're looking for what you've got, and we're looking for enthusiasm, we're looking for contributions. If you've got beautiful stuff, lovely. Uh, what can you contribute? Well, most of you have got something that you know works with your students. Um, if there's something you're particularly proud of, or something that you're not quite sure that you're proud of or not, but you'd like to show it to somebody else, we promise we won't publish it without your permission uh, until you're really happy. It could be just an exercise sheet, just one thing. It could be a week's worth of work with some homework exercises. It could be a whole set of stuff, lesson plans, reading assignments, practical work, homework, um, that stretches out over half a term. It could be anything like that. We just want to see it, please. So here's the plea. Two pleas, actually. One of them is get in touch. Yeah? please take down the email addresses. I've already had one offer since I've been at the conference. I can't, um, I can't remember the name of the person, but there's an email message on my machine saying, I'm really interested in this. I'm coming to your session later. So somebody's emailed me already. Um, please, Cynthia and I, and I are running two of the breakout sessions. At one's at 11 and the other one is at 1.40, is that right? Yeah? And we're not going to talk at you. We're going to try and get, uh, we're going to try and get your ideas together. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. I didn't expect a round of applause. Well, so uh, here's, uh, here's the uh, CAS website. So for the, um, uh, for the curriculum document, follow resources. And here you will find a link that has an elementary ICT error in it, as in <laughs> Simon typed in the wrong string. So it doesn't work at the moment. But it will, because he'll go, to, he'll go back to the bottom of the class and fix it.
but here it is, right? So, that, so, so, you, so you will be, but you have to follow the resources link. But let me also encourage you just to take a look at this documents link up here, um, right? Takes you to uh, this stuff, the CAS white paper policy documents, our, our submission to the National Curriculum Review, our submission to the um, Royal Society calls for, call for evidence. This is um, a relatively small number of people speaking on behalf of you, though we have circulated drafts to all of you. So please do take this stuff, check that you agree with it, say out if you don't. Maybe, maybe you'd even find material there that you could use with your head teacher because these represent um, our best goes at being persuasive, you know, doing that persuasive writing. So you may, you may even find it useful as a resource for yourselves. Um, last thing, it's a time of opportunity and risk. Opportunity because the ice really is cracking. There's a lot of, of motion around at the policy level. The, the national curriculum is being, being uh, slimmed down. There's, there's more opportunity to change what we do now just at the moment than there has been for a long time. So I think there's a real chance that some of what we've been saying and advocating might actually suddenly turn from being a guerrilla group into being national policy. So you better be careful that we're saying what you want us to say. Uh, that's, that's the opportunity. The risk is, this is a moment at which also I think we have a chance to scale up a bit from the enthusiasts in this room to 10 times as many outside. And that's, that comes back to what Stephen is saying. I think the risk that I see is that everybody's just too busy and we stay with the enthusiasts and we never scale up. If you, if you, it's a kind of, uh, this, we can no longer do, do this with working groups of 10, right? Got to involve all of you. So please join in. Thank you very much for the support you've given so far.